Hey everybody, welcome to Good Packer Nation Morning. I'm your host, Brady Augustine, and today is Friday. So on Fridays, I'm gonna handle all of your questions uh, on the live show. If you're listening to this recorded on YouTube, you will hear me answer the questions of the people. Uh, it's a good discussion today, and of course, on Friday, we always do predictions when there's a Sunday game. So you're not gonna wanna miss it. Check it out, Good Packer Nation Morning. Good Packer Nation Friday morning, everybody. Um, yeah, it is Friday. The weekend is almost here. So while you guys are jumping on it, emoji, let's have an emoji celebration for the weekend coming around, Packer football being back, college football being back, and the work week passing into the rear view mirror. So as you jump on, you can just hit that thumbs up button, hit that heart button. Let's have an emoji celebration for the weekend, which is just about here, finally. This has been a long week after a Packer loss. Thank you, Travis. Travis said sweet shirt. Yeah, I like this one too. Um, yeah, yeah, the week has been way too long, but it is finally coming to a close, guys. Yes, we are having an emoji celebration right now for the weekend coming back. Let me know who you are and where you're coming at me from, and we will do Packer Nation roll call. I said we got Travis, we got Nathan, Jared is here again giving us crap because it's Saturday there. Joseph is here. Trent is back. Good to see you, buddy. Nick is here. Johnny, Jeff, and Adam. Good to see you guys. It's good to see everybody out in Packer Nation. And it looks by the emojis coming across the screen that everybody's having a pretty good day. I missed a few, but we're back with Adam and Jordan and Norma from California representing. All right. Good, to, good job. Uh, Samantha is here. Judy, Justin, Kyle, and Thomas. Well, today's Friday, guys, and, um, you know, I have, it's it's going to be your show today. I'm trying to keep in uh, the, uh, I try to do every Friday, uh, pay a little more attention to what you guys are saying and have a little more of a discussion than me just jumping on here and blathering for 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. So we got Lawrence here and Aiden and Anna or Anna, whichever way you pronounce it. John and Mike are here as well. Uh, Dina from Helmuth, Indiana. All right. Well, yeah, we want to, I, I want to know kind of what's on your mind. I'm going to try to pay a little more attention to the stream here as we go. But before you start putting your comments, you can think about them now. But I want to stop for a minute and just make, uh, uh, on a little bit of a personal note, uh, my hometown of Black River Falls, Wisconsin, I'm not sure how extensive the flooding is up there, uh, but I caught a video from uh, my friend Craig Nelson, who I went to school with. So shout out to you, Craig. Great job for posting that. But the dam in Black River has now lost a gate. Uh, this footage showed a person uh, losing their boat and their dock just washing right through the gates of the dam up there. And I know, you know, we all know that if there's flooding in one place, it, it tends to just get worse and worse as it goes down. So I'm not sure how extensive all of that is, but I definitely my heart goes out to my little hometown of Black River Falls, Wisconsin. I know that everybody there is a little bit concerned. And for those of uh, those who live down the river and are losing property right now, that can be very concerning. I live on a little creek here that came very close to flooding into my home, and I know that it is, uh, it's a very tense situation to go through. So my mom was messaging me back that they were expecting it might rain again. So um, yeah, my heart goes out to all of those in my little hometown, Black River Falls. I hope that uh, the rain holds off in time for a little bit of the uh, flooding to subside. And to all of you who are concerned, I hope that uh, it, I hope it eases up. I really do for you. And I hope that uh, you guys can get back on track and they can get that damn fixed because that is a very important part of the operation of my hometown. So yeah, and if you feel for me on that, you can go ahead and heart um, for all the people, just put up a heart for all the people that might be, uh, you know, maybe not losing debt, losing property yet, but um, it can be a scary time, I can say from experience. So uh uh, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that first. Um, so yeah, what do you, um, all right, here's what Mark is saying. Yeah, play better. Okay. So I think if I caught what Mark was saying, right, he's, he's asking if we find it funny that Aaron Rodgers got up and basically he pretty much blasted the press and said that they didn't know anything. I don't know if you caught that, but basically he says, you know, you guys like to make your opinions is kind of how he worded it. Um, and, he, and he actually sort of tongue-in-cheek asked if they were, you know, getting their information from pro football focus. 
And then he said, but you don't know anything about where the launch points were and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is a, it's a true statement to some extent. Um, however, I know a lot of the guy, the beat re- reporters in uh, Green Bay are not getting their opinions from Pro Football Focus. They're watching the games. And I think what Mark is saying is Aaron Rodgers needs to play better. And he admitted it himself in the same interview. So um, I find it, I don't, fi- I'm not surprised at all. And I actually don't hold that against Aaron Rodgers because he is correct. He doesn't know all, or we don't know all of the moving pieces in this West Coast offense. But he didn't, in the interview, the thing I did like is he did not, he actually did say, you know, there's things I need to clean up and and I will get it done. There's things I need to do better. So what I'm going to do in terms of that is I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to basically wait and see, you know, we had yesterday where I said, I kind of did a mic drop. I was like, man, this, the personnel of this team has an opportunity to utterly destroy the Detroit Lions this week. And, uh, there was a guy who disagreed with me and I, I don't, you know, uh, I don't remember the name, but he said, I've seen nothing yet from this offense that makes me think that can happen. Now I don't disagree with that as a fact either. I, I disagreed with it in the sense that I think we've got the personnel and I got the feeling this is the week. Um, but at the same time, I can totally see his opinion that we have not seen it yet. So a wait and see approach maybe is a good balanced way to sort of treat the ways. Hey, we're one and one. We're not in the, we're not in any kind of sinkhole just yet. We lost to a very good Vikings team. Um, and we've got the Detroit Lions. We've got a chance to prove it. So I'm giving that same pass to Aaron Rodgers because there is truth in his statements uh, but at the same time, I would, I did, was glad to see him finally kind of own up and say, hey, listen, there's things that I need to do better and I will get those things uh, cleaned up. So that's my, my sort of position on that. Um, again, I, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, I'm a wait, it's a wait and see because we've seen a, a, we've seen too much deja vu from last year already this season. And the question being, like we talked about yesterday, is that because of the way we handled the preseason and the fact that these veterans haven't had a lot of, of live play time together. And once they get in sync, will we see the offense that we expect? So, or are they just going to be out of sync? Are we, are we going to play call ourselves into seven second pass plays, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Are we going to not have the receivers make the proper breaks? Is Aaron Rodgers not going to have protection enough to get to his launch points to make passes, et cetera, et cetera? So, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of question marks still out there, but I think they start, will start being answered on Sunday. Rick, my bro, my bro, Rick Motti is here. He went live, uh, before the game. I got a chance to check you out, Rick. Thank you so much for doing that. It was a very interesting look from inside the Jaguars stadium. And, uh, I appreciate you doing that, my friend. And then I jumped off, I think, and uh, we watched the game. So that was a couple weeks ago. It seems like that Jaguars game seems so far in the past already. Uh, But good to see my buddy there. Uh, Dustin is here. Sean is here. Everybody has a bad day. Give A-Rod a break. Uh, Okay. That's acceptable. Uh, I won't give him a break if he does the same thing (laughs) in this hit. Yeah, he had a bad day. Uh, definitely a bad day. Um, looking at it statistically, you could say that's the worst game that Aaron Rodgers has ever played, quite possibly. You'd have to probably go back to 08 when, you know, when, you know, his first, first time he stepped on the field. Hey, thanks. Uh, GB Packers likes the shirt too. A lot of people are liking the shirt. I think it's pretty cool, which is why I bought it. I don't buy clothes that often, but one, when I do, um, I usually, usually, uh, make some decent choices, I think. Um, all right. Uh, oh, MJ's looking for the precious. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's still right here. Yeah. No problem. Guys, I'm getting totally stoked for this game. It's coming up October and, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, uh, Brian is saying the Jags got rolled. Yeah. And that's true. You know, um, I think to some extent, again, that could go back to the question of whether the Packers offense our offensive woes, if you might want, you want to call them that, um, then th- if they're due to the fact that we still need time, I got to tell you folks, and, uh, let's, let's do this. Give me a thumbs up. If you agree with this, you may not agree with this, but today I was watching again and I get the feeling I hate to say this, but I get the feeling that this is an offense that needs more practice. Like it's just, it looks like an offense that just hasn't hit its stride. And to me, that actually could be a positive thing because, you know, once they do then, right, 
Um, and if I had a question to ask, you know, Aaron Rodgers or some of these guys, I would ask, you know, when you see the offense, you know, you, when you can't, Aaron Rodgers, get to your launch points the way you like, when you can't, uh, let's say, Devontae Adam, when you don't make your breaks at the points that you want to make your breaks, when the offensive lineman, when you say you've given up a launch point to Aaron Rodgers and you know that he had to extend a play because you let a free runner go through, how, how are we dealing with this right now? It does it just come down to practice or is when you ask about this kind of a timing West Coast offense, does it require you to just get together in games to some extent to iron a few of these things out, put some game tape on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think I got this feeling this team needs more reps on offense. So we'll see how that goes. Again, I think we're all, I really feel like after a week of that started with pissing and moaning, and moved into a little bit of just sort of questioning. I think we're now moving into the weekend, right? Cheers. And I think we're ready to just love our Green Bay Packers and watch and see. I don't know that anybody out there is, you know, going to guarantee anything at this point. We're all going to put our predictions up here in a little bit. But uh, I don't know that anybody's re really willing to guarantee anything just yet. But the one thing I do know is these, this, this team is, uh, this offense in particular, is working its butt off. Uh, to correct the issues it had in the Vikings game, playing against a very good defense. Um, and we did just about enough to win that game at the Vikings' new stadium, U.S. Bank Stadium. So um, so there are, it's not like there wasn't good that we can take out of it. I just think as Packer Nation, we're we, a, a win. I mean, and that's what Aaron Rodgers said. I said, I don't care how we do it. All we care about is winning. And we know that all Packer Nation cares about is winning, you know. Um, so... All right, let's, let's see if we got some more questions. Kenny Clark with his first sack of the game. Jared Dixon, nice point. I wanted to talk about Kenny Clark. Kenny Clark made a step in this game, and we're going to need him now. Uh, if Latroy Guyon can't go, Kenny Clark, did we not say this during the preseason, right, and even in training camp, that Kenny Clark looked like he was going to require some development to become the kind of player that we think he might be able to be, or especially the kind of player that it seems – Ted Thompson thinks he could be, all right? Uh, we are seeing that happen. Now, this is one of those situations where good can come out of a bad situation. Obviously, we're thin at the defensive line position already to start. Penal suspension. Then you add to that the fact that Latroy Guyon is hurt. Will he play at all? Uh, and with the uh, bye week coming up, there's a very real possibility that we we bench Latroy Guy. And if, if we're if we we tend to be conservative on these things, if we can be much more assured that in two weeks he's going to be 100 percent, we tend to move in that direction. Um, and so now we look at Kenny Clark. He looks active. Uh, again, I think that Kenny Clark and uh, you get Kenny Clark and when Latroy Guyon is healthy, get some development for, for Kenny this, this week. He's the kind of guy, he's young. Down the stretch, he's going to have, he's got younger limbs, younger wheels than everybody else. I think he could be somewhat of a difference maker. Not necessarily that he, maybe he could ever be as disruptive as Mike Daniels right now. Um, but he could be disruptive enough. And remember, in a 3-4, when we go with our base defense, if our linebacking core picks it up the way they have, all we really need out of our front three is to pick up double teams and occupy blockers and let help our linebackers run free. So um, it will be interesting to see, and definitely great point, Jared, that Kenny Clark is one of these guys. We all got to keep our eyes on this young kid because I know we're all pulling for him, right? I mean, are we not all pulling for this guy? He's our first-round draft pick. We've had a few of these guys who've taken a while to come on. We're looking at Dayton Jones and Nick Perry, who now uh, are starting to come on, although Dayton is another one that is hurt, I believe, this week. So we'll see how, how that goes. But our rotation is getting stronger, folks, and we haven't gotten Pennell back yet. So again, one thing I wanted to talk about, and I think that this conversation tags into it a little bit, is the fact that I am, where, where I'm going to, one of the standpoints that I am going to start from in terms of my critique, critique positive or negative, critique is either positive or negative, it can be both. It's going to be both with me. 
Um, one of the things that I stand on is my belief, and you can, you can love or hate Mark, Mike McCarthy. One of the things I believe about him is that he has a certain what's called scope and sequence to his seasons. The, the, the scope is a little bit different. There's a certain sequence of events, a certain sequence of goals for each game, for each quarter, and then for each season. But the overall scope is when the a coach looks to the far future and what the ultimate goals of the team are and then manages the game back to the beginning of September in the attempt to reach that most important and final goal. Okay, so let me give you an example of what this I, I believe. And again, you know, you can agree, disagree. We'll never know because Mike McCarthy certainly isn't going to get out and tell people that this is what he's trying to do. But I believe this is happening. I think Mike McCarthy, for example, I believe that he not only kept all of our starters pretty much out the entire preseason to keep them from getting injured. Obviously, that's a big reason. But Mike McCarthy knew that in his offense, it was going to t- this. There was a possibility that these first couple of games, or even this first quarter, might suffer if he did it that way. And I think his scope, his long-term uh, scope for this year, included taking that risk. And I think that might be exactly what we're seeing out on the field: taking that risk for the greater good of not only being in sync down the road, but also being healthy down the road. And also with the bye week being week four, having fresher legs for our guys down the field. That's why we didn't see much of Julius Peppers in the Jaguars game. I believe. Okay. So in that sense, I'm, uh, you know, even though I was disappointed in, in, in a lot of the things that happened in the Vikings game, this is a lot of the reason that I said the sky is not falling. Uh, for this Packer offense, or f- especially for this Packer team, okay? Our special teams needs work. But we're getting Chris Banjo back this, this week, it looks like. So again, I believe that Mike McCarthy has a broader plan, a larger scope, and longer-term goals where he is willing to risk a little bit of performance early on for the greater good later. And we'll see if this comes about. So, uh, but that's what I think is going on. And I think Kenny Clark is one that fits into that category because again, we held Julius Peppers out of the preseason. We held, uh, um, Clay Matthews out of the preseason for the most part. And who did, you know, but we, yet we put, we had to put Kenny Clark on the field quite a bit in the preseason. Well, he didn't play that great, but when you get a lot of playing time and a lot of reps for a young kid like that, now you've got coaching moments on tape. And teachable moments are priceless for these guys. And we know Kenny Clark's going to have to get some reps on this defense. And so I think that the value, when we cash it out at the end of the year, is going to be greater than the price we pay right now, both on defense as well as offense. And we will see again, um, you know, it's just a couple days, guys. And, and, you know, if we see this offense start to hit its stride, do you have any idea what kind of freaking offense we could have right now. Um, I suspect we'll give Eddie Lacy more touches. There's been a lot of talk about Eddie Lacy and trying to hit that 20, 20 rep point. Uh, we're not going to do that if we continue to take him out for entire quarters. And I'm still wondering exactly why that was the case. But I do believe we see Eddie Lacy get more touches in this game. Um, yeah, and Rick, the punter is garbage. Yeah, the, I know what they're trying to get out of this punter. They're trying to get high vertical punts that aren't going to dance, that aren't going to travel too far once they hit. But we, we've got to hit. His range is so short now that our offense is stressed just to get it within range where he can make a difference by punting at all. The difference between either Maste or Mortel and, uh, um, uh, and I'm losing his name now, um, <laughs> our punter, uh, the difference is he's, he kicks the ball high and his, he's got good placement. He supposedly has good placement. We haven't had a chance to see it yet. But when you have good placement and you can get the punt to be traveling very vertically, you get less travel after the bounce. That's what they're looking for. They want to pin opponents in, inside their five is what they're looking to do. But his, his, his range is so... Shum, thank you. Shum. 
I, I call it Shum. I'm, I'm wanting to pronounce that Shum. Everybody I've seen has pronounced it Shum. I have yet to see him pronounce his own name. That's what I always look for. That's why I always call Adrian Peterson A.D., because I know, he said, that's what his, his nickname was all day growing up. And that's why he goes by AD. That's his nickname. I don't say AP, even though a lot of people do, because those are his initials. Okay. Thank you so much, Shum. How, how could I forget that name? Well, maybe I've been trying to. I think subconsciously I've been trying to forget that name for a couple of weeks now. Um, uh, so, uh, oh, I saw Jeff is on, and I did not catch your comment there, there Jeff. Um, but yeah, we're talking about special teams needs to improve. I think we do to some extent by getting some guys back. Um, obviously, the offense is, is the big one sort of in the news this week. And I do believe this that this week is a, a real opportunity for our offense to get on, the tra on track. Let's take that in the balance. All right. So let's, you know, uh, speak hypothetically for a little bit here. Because we talked yesterday about, I believe that if this offense can get on track, that's the hypothetical right now, right? Um, that they can score a lot of points in this game. And we, when you look at the personnel, this should be a, a Packer offense that averages about 30 points a game. But on the, on the flip side of that with our defense, you look at this game against the Detroit Lions, this could be an excellent challenge for our defense against the Lions. Because, number one, we have s significant injuries on our defense. All right, thankfully it looks like uh, Hyde will be able to play because it looks like Morgan Burnett will not. Uh, we're going to have, hopefully, Chris Banjo back, but we may be missing Dayton Jones, so our rotation there hurts. Uh, Mark says, good, good morning to Packer Nation. This could be a very big challenge for our defense, but it's going to be one of those challenges, I think, that is, ha gives us the opportunity to show the depth that we built in the preseason. And it will be interesting. LB, LB's, don't jump the gun on the, on the uh, predictions, man. I think he's got 28-9 Packers, which uh, sounds just dandy to me. Three, three field goals. Uh, I think our defense might have a challenge this time around. I believe we might give up a few more points. But, geez, against the freaking Vikings, who gave up 17 points. Those are games we should win. Um, especially, I mean, you got to give, you got to get, take your hat off to the, the Vikings defense, you know, to stay, get paid too. It wasn't just us screwing around all the time. It was, you know, they get paid too. Um, Rick is, is saying he fears that, uh, Shields, career is over. That's another one we're missing right now and adds to the challenge. And we may have to show that depth down the stretch. Again, Shields is another one that, you know, uh, went out against uh, Arizona, was not available during Ar the Arizona game, right? We were, we were able to come close to winning that game. And we've also seen that, you know, uh, offenses know against a Dom Capers defense, you're going to be able to, there's going to be some soft spots in the middle. But we also saw Jake Ryan with a nice pass deflected. Um, this, we're, so we're seeing some good things with the depth. Um, but I do believe that this might be a challenge because I've been watching Matthew Stafford this year, and I'm going to tell you this. Uh, sometimes, and you, if you guys remember back to Sterling Sharp, to some extent, our Packer offense improved when Sterling Sharp was injured and could not come back. Now, I'm not saying anything against Sterling Sharp. I thought Sterling Sharp was awesome. I think if he could have played out of his career, he would have been a Hall of Famer. I think he would have been the only, only Hall of Famer that, uh, that you know, Brett Favre had a chance to play with. But when you lean on one superstar too much, you kind of see what happened when we lost Jordy Nelson last year. But we are not that kind of an offense anymore necessarily. But one thing I will tell you is the Lions are not that kind of offense. Without Megatron, it's almost like strike me down and you will only make me stronger. Uh, there, Matthew Stafford is being more careful with the ball. He has more input in the offense and he is distributing the ball better. Okay, we've talked a lot about Amir Abdullah being out, you know, put up, placed on IR. Theo Riddick out of the backfield is somebody we are going to have to be very careful of in this game. Uh, we know that we're going to have trouble against tight ends. We're, we know that sometimes, you know, uh, little scat backs coming out of the backfield are going to give us problems. We got to watch Riddick in this game. Um, yes, and Josh is saying the Lions look great in week one. What they put up, 45? I mean, um, the, uh, the Indianapolis Colts were lucky. Um, and Jeff's saying they stink. Um, I, you know, I, again, we will see when, when, when we play them is when it's really going to matter, right? I mean, that's where the true analysis of the Lions is going to come in. But uh, Matthew Stafford, I think, is playing better ball than he was last year. 
Uh, now, do I think that uh, if Clay Matthews can get on the field, which again, here's another one we don't know about, do I think our defensive rotation can give him a whole lot of problems? But Matthew Stafford compared to Bradford, Matthew Stafford absolutely trucked. Uh, I forget who it was, but it was uh, the safety, I think, coming up to make a tackle. When Matthew was running the ball, he trucked him. <laughs> So there's a difference there, okay? Um, and yeah, no, I do not think Matthew Stafford, I think Aaron Rodgers can outplay Matthew Stafford in this game. If we get a few things right and we start getting our rhythm, I think there's no reason to believe that Aaron Rodgers should not outplay Matthew Stafford. Statistically, and of course that would mean we'd probably win the game. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, it will be interesting, and I think that it's, I'm going to have my, I'm going to be in particular watching the defensive challenge that we face. And if this team really steps up, and our defensive rotation, perhaps without Dayton Jones or, Dayton Jones or possibly uh, Clay Matthews, if we can step it up and do enough to win, and maybe keep the, the, the Lions score down in, I would expect now, I'm kind of giving away my prediction a little bit, the low 20s. Uh, Eli Elias is saying 31-24. Um, maybe something like that. Then I think we can win this game, and I think we can be happy with the outcome of a game. You know, you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, you can be happy with the outcome because it's a win. But if you look at the way we played, to some extent, we were not happy with the outcome of that game. Of course, the win is the most important thing. Then you look at the, uh, you look at the Vikings game. Now, we could have gone, if we had marched down and been able to tie it with a field goal and finally come, on, come away with a win, would we still have been happy with the outcome of that game? To some extent, Yes, but to a great extent, we would have still been looking at how, we, how did we squeak a win against these guys. So I think that this is the game that gives us an opportunity, maybe even if we give up more than the 17 points or whatever, the tw you know, low 20s, we could still be happy with the outcome of this game. So, um, all right, we've got uh, some people rolling up. Clay Matthews is so overrated. Okay, J.J. Hur says, Clay Matthews is overrated. You guys can emoji a response to that. We do thumbs up or angry face, whatever you guys want to do. Is Clay Matthews overrated? Uh, MJ says no. Um, Nancy says, uh, we got predictions coming across as well, 24-17. We're going to get to predictions in a little bit. All right. Um, yeah, Jared is mentioning, is that our troll? Great. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and I'll let you guys comment. You can jump up and, and reply to any of those, that kind of nonsense that comes on. Uh, if he's been seen here before and folks, if you want, um, you know, we can always ban somebody if they're truly just somebody else jumping on here to, to that's no problem. Um, I got no problem with them because it's a fairly, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's a waste of time, you know, um, and I don't worry about that kind of stuff. I don't worry about people like that. Haters gonna hate, right? Uh, but we've got a lot of laughter across the field is what we're looking at now. The joke. Okay. Uh, Brian is here happy with 38 to 35. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and uh, Adam's saying Matthews is a beast when he gets on the field. A lot of people, you know, uh, jealousy sometimes reigns. That's pretty much the truth. More angry faces than likes, yeah, for sure. All right, guys, um, Tim is mentioning the bloodline. Packers record this year, 15-1, and one, says Bryce. There's a bold prediction, Bryce. I like that. I like guys jumping on here and making a bold prediction. I made a few yesterday. Frankly, I can hardly even remember what they were. I guess I'd have to go back and look at the, look at the film. Uh, Sean, want me to ban him? All right, we'll strongly consider that. If we get on and people are, would prefer not to see that, I'd just assume you guys go ahead and slam him. <laughs> because, I mean, obviously when somebody comes on and makes a comment like that, they either don't know anything about the Packers or don't know anything about football football or both. So, um, and Jeff is mentioning, this is a good point, Jeff, that we need Ringo to step up. And I think he's another one that has, he's done a little bit. And yeah, if he takes another step forward and Kenny Clark continues to improve, it's going to be real interesting to see this defense get on the field Sunday. Uh, this is going to be a defense uh, for, this is going to be a defense that may very well be lacking some players that we were hoping would be on the field, to be quite honest, against the Detroit Lions. Be really going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, so, all right, guys, it's Prediction Friday. We've tried to make this your show as much as possible. I talked about a few things. I'll go over my list a little bit, too. Uh, oh, one of the things I do, before you roll out your prediction, they're already coming. Um, <laughs> before you roll out your predictions is I want to talk about one thing, okay? 
I mentioned I would, was calling this show um, If I Only Had a Heart. One of the things, and again, you, you heart me if you agree with this, okay? Uh, and again, I don't, this is not the be-all, end-all of our offensive woes, okay? So let me preface this with this. But I asked myself this question this morning, and I want to ask you guys today. It's Friday. It's a happy day, all right? But what I found myself asking, where is the heart of our offense? Where is the guy who is not only a good player, maybe he's not even the best player, maybe he's not even a superstar, but he brings emotion, energy, and heart to our offense. Aaron Rodgers is not that kind of a leader, and that's no knock against Aaron Rodgers. Some leaders are more cerebral. He's a more cerebral leader. Aaron Rodgers is not that type, but you need to have a brain out there too, all right? He's a Hey, all right, something glitched there for a moment. Aaron Rodgers is like our scarecrow, and he's got a brain. I mean, he got his brain, all right? So I'm not, again, these aren't negative uh, analogies. Maybe it's the worst analogy ever. But um, we need a cowardly lion out there getting his heart. And uh, is it just me? Uh, we, I've got Jordy Cobb laying out. But let me ask you this. If this team still had John Kuhn, would we be asking this question? And again, I'm not going back wishing or angry about us letting Kuhn go, but just answer the, just, just heart me if you think, if we still had John Kuhn, we would not have to be asking this question right now. So to some extent, I think that our offense needs to find a little bit of emotion, a spark plug. I kind of wish we were able to keep John Crockett. He was a little bit of that spark plug. I see an offense that is very professional. There's nothing wrong with that. This is pro football. I see an offense that is very cerebral. There is nothing wrong with that in pro football. But the one thing I think might be missing is somebody out there that really brings heart to the game. And I know Jordy was mentioned, but Jordy is a very cerebral guy. He's not an emotional type of a player. Let me say, and you, now it's time for the thumbs up if you agree. I honestly think Eddie Lacy could be our heart. And we take him off the field too much. Eddie Lacy, it's, it's easier for a running back to get out there and be emotional because anger and the Hulk mindset is part of being a good running back. And Eddie Lacy, when he breaks a tackle and makes a good run, he goes nuts. And I will tell you this much. Our offensive line loves run blocking for Eddie Lacy. And I honestly, when I look over, and it's nothing against any of our other players, because some of them are more important, maybe, are more pivotal to our offense than Eddie Lacy. But one thing I wanted to say today, and I'll say this to Eddie Lacy, man, I think you are running like a freak right now. I hope you get the ball 20 times this week. I love the way you respond when you have a good run. I love what you did with your off season to get yourself to respond to criticism without complaining and just get it right. I want to see you get 20 touchdowns. I want to see you truck some people. There are defensive backs out there that do not like tackling you. And that is the biggest compliment anyone can make of a running back. Eddie Lacy, I believe you are the heart that we are. We want to see. You're the heart that we want to see on the field more because once you start beating... And once you start getting in rhythm, I truly believe this entire offense will get in rhythm. Period. That's my mic drop. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to add that as part of the show. I'm gonna have to do a mic drop every every show because that's my mic drop. This guy has done nothing but respond to criticism. Let's give him the ball and see what he can do. He's in a contract year. Uh, let's let him get out there and, uh, and, and make it a special year. I still stand by my bold prediction that this is going to be one of the best offensive seasons Aaron Rodgers has ever had, which again, right, big question mark now, but I still hold to it. I also hold to my pr prediction that this is going to be Eddie Lacy's best season. And again, I'm not talking just numbers there. I'm talking the outcome. Again, let's, let's think about the scope, the overall scope of this season. Let's get Eddie Lacy the ball. Let's get him, let's get him involved. And uh, let's get this Hulk, let's let him unleash and Hulk smash uh, out there on the field. All right, let's go with predictions, guys. I am, uh, I actually, I actually have not, I haven't, it's been hard for me to put a number on this one, to be quite honest. Um, but again, got to do it. Um, 
I'm gonna, I'm, I'll lay it out here. Failure is not an option. That's Colonel Johnny out there. Dude, are you the dude from the YouTube channel that we, we talked to a long time ago? Um, we need to get you back and start doing some uh, collab with you if you're still doing your YouTube, if it's the same guy. Uh, it's the only guy I knew that, that called himself that. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot of people thinking, you know, Eddie Lacy can be the heart of this offense. I just love the guy. Uh, Terry says 27-13 Packers. We got 38-17, 31-17 from John. JJ says 21-20 Pack and a close one, 24-10, 28-13, and 24-13 says Daniel. Um, I do believe, okay, let's break this down a little bit. Again, if you guys have to go, if you got to go to work or whatever, you can jump off. Um, I will, if you say goodbye to, I will try to say goodbye to you as well on the show. I can't always keep my eye on it very well, but here's my breakdown. All right. I think the offense feeds Eddie Lacy more in this game. Uh, I think the Detroit Lions, their upfront split is a little bit wide, and I think we can actually have success up the middle, which is why I think we do run uh, off guard. I think we do more a, a gap runs in this game than we've been. It seems like we've been trying to, you know, uh, spread uh, spread teams out or, or trying to reach the edge, and I just don't see that as Eddie's strength. Um, I do, of course, we'll expect to see a lot of James Starks in this, but I hope that we see James Starks spelling Eddie Lacy rather than James Starks playing a certain number of quarters or reps or however they've been doing it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so I do think we're going to get the running game going, which means that we may not necessarily score as many points as I originally was thinking. Remember yesterday, I said we got an opportunity to blow the doors off this one. Um, but uh, I've got, all right, I do think the Packers score over 30 in this one. I think yesterday I said that they're, I think that was one of my bold predictions that they were going to drop a 40 burger. All right. So if that's the case, I, I absolutely, I have to stick with that. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, Packers put 45 on the board. All right. We get uh, two out of, uh, off the ground. Uh, I do think we could split that one with Eddie Lacy, one with the James Starks, and um, because J you know James Starks, he gets his opportunities, and the way that we handle field position, we don't seem to really care who we put in. We just put in, you know, we we seem to be able to, we seem to believe that we plug and play either of these guys. And to be honest, Starks in the past has been one of those guys that you can kind of plug and play. Just look at the 2010 season. Um, yeah, and Jared's reminding me I can't go back now. Okay, so for 45. Um, now having, it, this really hurts me because my thinking this morning was di a little different. Um, but because there's some guys we got, we, we got to watch this. Let me tell you one name that you got to watch on this, uh, defense, this Detroit Lions defense is Kerry Hyder. Uh, Kerry Hyder versus, uh, Lane Taylor. What they like to do is the outside guy, but what they like to do is cross him inside and he can walk guard straight back into the, into the quarterback. Uh, again, if we can run the ball, you know, that pressure comes out of the equation. If we get that pressure and we get the ball out quicker, you know, we can throw over that pressure. I think we can handle it. Uh, but we watch that guy, watch that kid, uh, Kerry Hyder. He drops some weight. He looks faster, uh, but he is, he is a strong, he's strong. Um, so I guess that matchup has me a little concerned. Although, you know, Taylor's done a good job thus far. All right. Brian says 45, 24. All right. Uh, I am going to go uh, 45-27. I think we give up a few more, just a shade under 30. I'm thinking with the injuries we have uh, and the fact that I would, to some extent, compare the, uh, eh, I don't know if I would compare, but I could. if, if you were going to ask me on a scale of 1 to 10, I think the Jaguars offense and the Detroit Lions offense, I might have them in somewhat the same range there. Uh, but I think that the defense is going to have a challenge in this game. Um, we we got to watch. I mean, I think if we can handle tight ends out of the backfield, we could keep keep it up. But you look at the you look at if you're an offensive coordinator for the Lions right now, are you planning to run the ball or are you planning to? I mean, you're going to have to run the ball some, but you know that Matthew Stafford and your core of wide receivers and Theo out of the backfield, et cetera, et cetera, it's going to be what it takes to get it done, and that plays into the weakness of Dom Capers' defense right now. So again, that's why I'm going to amp up the score that I think we might give up on defense. Um, and uh, yeah, 40, 40, I got to put it, I got to write it on the board, guys, that we give up 27, Packers 45. I could be eating my words on that one, but, but I do believe it's possible. I do believe it's possible. 
I just having watched a little bit more and uh, seen a few things, um, I guess here's what I'm kind of, this, this, this week, this is what I'm banking on. I'm banking my uh, prediction on, okay? And I'm okay with this, all right? Um, and, and if you agree, you can heart me on this one if you agree, because it's Friday, guys. I am banking my prediction on the fact that I am now, today, I am totally seeing the world through green and gold colored glasses. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, I know there's improvements that we need to make. Uh, and JJ's making a good comment out there uh, that Ebron, we've got we've to handle him. I think Theo out of, the, out of the backfield as well could give us some problems. I would give Ebron a touchdown in this game, most likely. Remember, um, you know, this is the, I, in week one. I think they put up 45 points. Um, then they stumbled um, this last week, only able to put 15 on the board. So uh, have they been figured out? It's a big question. Um, but Anquan Bolden also, this guy destroyed us. It was several years ago, I know. But man, he was a, he was a, he was grit under our craw for an entire game. Back when Colin Kaepernick was in the news for playing football for a change. Um, so uh, Adam has to head out, it looks like. He's saying have a great day to everybody. You too, buddy. I hope you have a fantastic Friday. Um, I am going to, oh, well, I was going to close with this, I guess. The reason I am sticking with my prediction is because right now I am a total Packer homer. If you're with me, cheers. You can heart me on that one. I will close the show with this. And it won't be my mic drop. Um, because my mic drop was about Eddie Lacy being the heart of this offense. But I do want to say that I'm drinking the Kool-Aid right now. I think that this offense has a chance to get in sync this time around. And if we can get the ball, if we can get the running game going early and not have to, and then if we can get the running game going early and then rely on it late, I think we will win this game. So I've got the Packers. It's on the board, 45-27 in this game, and we will see if I am right. And remember now, when... Um, <laughs> Mic drop. Uh, when we come back on Monday, we are going to have the sacred space. Okay, I'm going to keep mentioning this. The sacred space on Monday is going to be when we let the comment sec section go blank, except for those folks who are within six points. We'll say six points of calling the score. And you get to freaking talk yourself up and tell your, that you are the man or you are the woman. And uh, you get that space, okay? Um, and hopefully we score 45 points and the defense, uh, if the defense holds us, holds them to 24, I get to still uh, do a little uh, uh, smack talking myself. And either way, of course, what we really want out of this is just a Packers win, okay? I'll close the show with that, guys. Well, you have a great Friday. I'm, I'm so glad you guys joined me. It's been a great show. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, go get that troll if he's still out there. And you guys have a great Friday. Enjoy all the college, high school football. And then, of course, we'll look for a big Packer win come Sunday, regular time for a change against the Detroit Lions. Have a great day. Get the ring.